So how I'm able to stay so lean whilst being overseas. Now, I thought I'd make this video just so I could share my journey and basically let you know, you know, how everything's all going, the challenges I faced, and you know, whether this is something that was difficult, was easy, you know, so I'm just gonna get straight into it just for those that are thinking of maybe going overseas and, and thinking, you know, can I maintain my physique? Um, can I get extra lean? Like, you know, look, these are a few questions that you could ask yourselves, but at the end of the day, look, none of this, like I wouldn't be able to do any of this if I didn't walk into it with a, a specific blueprint, right? Like a blueprint knowing how much macros I'm meant to have per day and because I know exactly what my specific calorie intake macronutrients are for the day for each and every day if I was to you know cut weight if I was to maintain if I wanted to go on like a lean bulk I know exactly what needs to be done right like I know exactly how much to eat now without this blueprint without this without my custom macros to eat each day and then hit the target this will be very difficult right this is not a game where you can basically guess like this is something that you need to have your your custom macros dialed in you need to know exactly all right cool i'm on a cut this is how much i need to eat and you need to walk into it not blindly right that's what i'm trying to say so in all honesty I did face challenges on the way, right, to to get extra lean, right? I was already, I know how to maintain my physique. That's, that's no problem at all, right? So the amount of calories that I need for my specific body is 2,900 calories, right, to maintain. Now, before coming to Thailand, I was sitting at about 12% body fat, right? And I was just eating just slightly above maintenance, all right? Slightly above maintenance calories. And I decided I wanted to go on a 12 week cut, right? A 12 week cut challenge where I wanted to get down to 8% body fat, right? And to be honest, right? I've been at 7% body fat before, right? I've, I've done this before, but I wanted to, I did it more on a lower calorie intake, so I did it at like 17, 1800 calories, calories, which I don't advise anyone to do. Like don't significantly drop your, your calories. I did that towards the end of that cut that I did for 12 weeks and I got diced, yeah? Like absolutely shredded. Like I had veins going through my stomach, everything, yeah? But because I dropped my calories drastically, it wasn't something that you could sustain, right? So I ended up sort of putting more body fat back on my body was trying to just you know keep my keep me protected right it was trying to keep me safe it didn't want me to go into like starvation mode which is what your body will do if you drastically try to cut calories right so after that cut i went on like a uh, a 12 week sort of mini bulk and look man i've been training for i've got at least eight years training under my belt but out of those eight years we'll 70% of them, I was someone that partied, I was someone that, you know, drank, I went out, um, I would do drugs, have benders, have nights where like I wouldn't eat and I'd be lacking a lot of sleep, so I'd be missing a lot of sleep. And to be honest, look, I wasn't maximizing my results. I wasn't seeing the results I wanted or envisioned in my mind, right? I was only getting like, like half assed results. I'd look like someone that trained, but I didn't look like someone that completely transformed his physique, right? And that's what I always wanted. I always wanted to, to have a physique that I was proud of, something lean, something diced. And ever since a couple of years ago, I got a coach, I got a, a nutritionist that explained everything A to Z for me, okay? And luckily it was a friend of mine, so actually I could have, I could, I got access to first-hand information and this person's basically like an encyclopedia 
for for transforming physiques right nutrition everything so i got all the the information i needed right and i absorbed it i trialed and errored with the custom macros that were given to me for my physique so we we worked everything out and only when i started to get professional help from someone who's done this loads and loads of like years yeah like it's got years under his belt that's when i decided that's when i actually started to see changes in my life right and i can take that information with me to the grave i now have the ability to maintain do a lean bulk do a cut i can do things at my will and manipulate my body right so that's going back to the initial question like you know was it hard to to stay lean whilst overseas apart from some, some of the challenges i've faced which i'll discuss shortly it wasn't hard at all because i went into this with a blueprint i had basically you know my calories already adjusted on my phone so on my fitness pal and it's just a matter of hitting that target each and every day right and because i've done it before it's an automatic habit of mine so it's something that's not daunting it's something that's pretty it's very easy i would say to me like it's it's fairly easy and those that you those of you that track your calories and and you know exactly what your particular body needs in order to accomplish whatever goals you're trying to accomplish you know that it's it's basically just a habit that you've built up over time and it's not difficult right at the end of the day it's not difficult so look coming to thailand i was sitting at 12 percent body fat my goal was to get to single digit eight percent body fat and i was i was basically willing to do whatever it took to do that but do it in a healthy way right so when i came to thailand i was in a, a city area okay so i had access to you know supermarkets protein everything right and it was i had pretty much everything that i had in my like from in australia like in the western world had everything that i normally would eat over there and yeah i just continued with my my challenge i started my 12-week challenge um started at roughly about around feb okay early feb like the second or first week of feb and to be honest that wasn't that like that wasn't daunting at all but what was i guess challenging for me was more or less because as part of my tourist visa i need to leave the country every 60 days right and you need to cross the border like you need to leave the border of the country so you either need to fly to a different country um or they do have like you know border runs where you can like you know jump on a van they drive you to like the neighboring country like whether that's like burma um you know sometimes malaysia depending on where in thailand you're at um or even cambodia right they drive there but i decided you know what i'm gonna fly to cambodia and after my 60 days was up um i went to cambodia right and here's where things got very interesting for me and i ended up in a a country sort of rural area okay and i did not like i've never been to cambodia before should have done a bit more research however ended up in a country area and i was put to the test right when i say i was put to the test i was literally like had no supermarkets near me the closest gym was like 30 minutes away um i was basically put to the test like that was a major challenge for me because i was so used to in thailand having a gym like 10 5 10 minutes away from me I had a supermarket five minutes away from me um had access to everything that i needed right and now i'm put in i'm put outside my comfort zone okay i'm really put outside my comfort zone in a countryside area it's so hot in cambodia those that have been to cambodia it's so hot right it's i would say it's even hotter than thailand to be honest um it was so hot where i was and i was there for about close to 10 days and The problem with with food well like nutrition what i had up there was there was no access to like chicken breast for me there was no access to 
couldn't even get rice up there, right, as a, as a carb. Um, it was very difficult, right? So what I had to do was, I had to do this, right? I had to think, okay, how am I gonna reach my macros? Continue with this cut. I didn't, I'm not gonna give up, right? At the end of the day, I refused to give up. I decided, all right, you know what I do have access to? So it's, instead of sitting there complaining and being like, oh, they, I don't have this, so maybe I'll just wait 10 days, go back and then continue the cut. Nah, I didn't do that, right? I, I had protein powder, which was whey protein is like godsend, right? Like that is basically the number one supplement. That's the only supplement in my fitness journey that I rely on in terms of like my muscles, my gains, my goals, you know? Having whey protein, I had whey protein with me, right? Had whey protein. I had brought some cans of tuna from Thailand to Cambodia. So I had like 10 cans of like those big cans of like spring water, spring water tuna. Had that, low calories. And I found a place that just sold eggs. Okay, so like I just got eggs. Yeah, I got plenty of eggs. Yeah, I got like a ton of eggs and because they don't have rice where I was, I had to just literally like every sort of stall that they have in the area I was at would sell only like two minute noodles, like, and like local sort of Thai food, uh, sorry, Cambodian food that they eat, which are like soups with like very low amounts of protein. Um, well, Cambodian people are fairly skinny, right? Like, and it's not a first world country. So you, you know, you gotta, you're gonna expect that, right? So. I decided, you know what, I'm just going to eat the two minute noodles. I just got a ton of two minute noodles, just got eggs and had my tuna, had my whey protein and oh, I bought some olive oil as well with me. So that was, I had some access to some, some good fats, right? And I remember thinking, I'm like, you know what, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cook the noodles. I'm not going to add any flavoring, no seasoning. Like, I don't know if this has all got MSG. I don't know. Either way, I didn't want to do that, right? I literally would just boiled the noodles, drained them, added, like made like six, oh, sorry, four egg whites, two yolks, and literally just added a can of tuna, which was like 33 grams of protein, right? So like, I literally ate that like, three times a day. I did ate the same meal for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I did have like low calorie, like sriracha sauce, which was good just to add a bit of flavoring. Um, but yeah, I just had that. And to make up for my protein intake, which was at that time was 220 grams. I would just make up the difference with the, the whey protein I had, right? So I was put to the test. I, I wasn't able to have, you know, my, my grilled fish. I wasn't able to have my, you know, grilled chicken breast that I normally eat. Um, I didn't have all the vegetables that I normally have access to, um, all the fruits, like there was like watermelons and stuff like that. So whenever I saw watermelons, I would just like get like a watermelon smoothie and just drink that, right? And coconut water, like time to time. But other than that, I just lived on the same meals, man, for the same, like every single day for pretty much those 10 days. Um, I didn't want to trust eating local food. I don't, I'll be hungry again if I eat something that's like, like, I didn't know what it was, man. It was literally like soups and like, like just like a, a, maybe like five grams of protein in there. And like, yeah, I just, I couldn't do that. So I just thought, you know what? I'm going to eat just this basic food for the next 10 days. And in terms of training, now this was another challenge because the gyms were like 30 minutes away. I had to, I wasn't able to go each and every single day, right? Like 30, 40 minutes away from where I was. So I had to, um, I literally just trained lift weights. I did resistance training for about three three days a week. And I'm used to training about five times a week, right? With resistance training. I trained three times for that whole 10 day period, right? Three times. And what I did have access to, okay, was the ability to go for walks. So I would always go for like morning walks. Um, I would also always go for like evening walks and I would just get my steps in, right? Get my steps in and I did that, right? And I just continued to just keep shredding. I just continued to lose weight. Um, yeah, 
I was I was put to the test. I was in a position where like it was challenging for me. I was put outside my comfort zone. And I passed the test, right? Like these are tests. I look at it like this. This was a test of mine thinking, sorry, from the universe saying, you know what? I'm going to put you outside your comfort zone. I'm not going to give you everything to your disposal. I'm going to see how you how you get through it and I passed with flying colors like I just made a really difficult challenging situation fairly easy to to move forward with right I could have easily complained but I didn't I didn't complain I continued to just persevere had consistency and I ended up getting the results now after returning back to Thailand I was again you know in a, I was in an area where I had access to supermarkets so I just continued the gym so I continued training did what I had to do but look I was on a 12 week challenge okay and the hardest bit about the challenge was that I had to cut it short by week 11 so I was meant to do this for 12 weeks I had to cut it short for week 11 the reason why I had to cut it short was because actually started to develop like a, a benign like cyst on my forehead right and it started getting really big it started expanding and that was a very challenging time for me as well right because at the end of the day I didn't know what it was every time I like checked Google and this is something I don't advise you to do until you actually get a proper diagnosis of, of what the issue is you know I was thinking is that a tumor is it cancer um, this literally started growing and it was like ugly it was the size of like oh it was getting big man it was getting big right and it was like right here on my forehead so like aesthetically it just I felt like yuck right but in the midst of that I still kept training still kept hitting my macros I was on a challenge all right I made a promise to myself to everyone that I'm gonna do this challenge regardless and I didn't quit even though seeing that on my head even though I had negative thoughts each and every morning thinking like fuck is this something bad like is this something severe I just kept persevering man I just kept reaching my goals and I didn't let that affect my my results right I did have negative thoughts but I cancelled them out kept going kept pushing looked at the bigger picture at hand and by Week 11, I went and visited a, a hospital and spoke to a surgeon and he saw my head and he's like, all right, we're going to surgically remove it, right? We're going to get rid of it. It's not anything cancerous. It's not a tumor and we're going to have to cut it, right? Like we're going to have to cut it off. We're going to have to squeeze all the stuff out of it. And man, that was, that was challenging because we basically had to get rid of everything from there, like from my head like that cyst had to remove it and I knew after getting it removed because it looked the reason why it's formed there's no real exact answer to why it's formed but the doctors over there or the surgeon he reckons it was due to the heat um, I haven't been in a hot country this long right like I've never been in a hot country for this amount of period like this time frame and yeah, I found that it was um, it was due to the heat, right? It was due to the heat, and uh, it is what it is, right? Like I had no control over it. I could be sad, I could be depressed, but I chose not to. I chose, you know what? It is what it is, and I'm just gonna do my best to, you know, get rid of it, right? Like get rid of it. So I like saw the surgeon. He removed it. And um, yeah, he said, look, you can't go to the gym, you can't train, you can't, you know, you can't do what you normally do. You gotta take at least seven to eight days off, right? And I was like, damn, all right. And he's like, I'm gonna prescribe you like these antibiotics. I was on antibiotics. I was on like ones I couldn't even pronounce, right? And I was also on painkillers as well. I was on painkillers and man that he's like look you just gotta have to stay in the shade you're gonna have to basically rest recover sleep and these antibiotics make you really drowsy all right they're fairly strong they're like high milligrams i don't know i don't take stuff like this 
but gave me really strong antibiotics. Had to take like, I think, I had to take like six tablets a day, like of everything, six to seven tablets a day, all with meals, made me feel lethargic, couldn't be exposed to sunlight, right? I had to basically sit in a room um, or just be in the shade. And that was like, that was really challenging for me, right? That was really challenging because I'm someone who's very active, I'm fit. I love maintaining my fitness, you know, and this was a major setback for me. However, I just had faith. I had faith that, look, you know what? For these seven days, it's gonna pass. And after the seven, eight days, I'm going to at least have that removed from my head. And, you know, I'm gonna be able to move forward, right? But, so that was basically the start of week 11. And that's where I had to end my, uh, I'm gonna cut so when if you see when you see my thumbnail on this photo on this uh, video that's basically where I ended everything out that were the results I got right and it was again another test that I was put through right how am I going to persevere when I don't have access to you know these are just tests that just keep coming at me like this is part of life you know trials and tribulations and um, am I going to give up or Am I just gonna look at it like in a real negative standpoint? Am I gonna whinge about it? Or am I just gonna be like, these are the cards I've been dealt with, unfortunately, and uh, it is what it is, and I'm just gonna get back on track as soon as I, as soon as I have the option to, uh, you know, get back in the gym, get back on my feet, get off these medications. And yeah, that's what I did. So I'm so grateful I stuck through it. Now, at the end of this challenge, right, at week 11 I ended up getting to about n between yeah about nine nine and a half percent body fat right and I'm fairly happy with the results I got but I wanted to go for eight because that's what why that was my main intention to get to eight percent body fat and I only got to I only got to um, I only got to like nine nine and a half right like nine and a half I got I would say close to and um, it is what it is, right? So I thought about this, look, that week I had to take off and end, cut it short, like the cut from week 11. I thought this, right? I'm going to go on a diet break, okay? I'm gonna go on a diet break for two weeks. I'm going to replenish my hormones. I'm gonna, so my, my, my calories were just slightly above maintenance, right? It was just sitting at just around 3,000-ish um, at the time, so 3,000, 3,050. And I was just maintaining my weight. You do also, when you do diet breaks, you slightly put on a little bit of, a little bit of weight, right? Maybe a kilo or so. But I had to do this because I wanted to end the cut at that time where I couldn't train for a week. I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this time to replenish my body. I'm going to, you know, reconfigure my hormones get them all good again and after that week ended um yeah as i record this video today today's the last day of me being on my diet break okay and then tomorrow i'm back at a 10 to 12 week cut i'm back at it so i would say after today i'll be sitting at about 10 percent body fat okay probably 10.3 um 10.5 roughly around there and my goal originally was to get down to eight percent so what i'm going to do now is go back on the cut I'm not going to change my calories my cutting calories are still going to be you know 24 it'll be 2400 this time before it was i tried to do a very mild cut right like try not it i didn't want to approach it so aggressive I've done that before in the past so I did that I originally did my cut at 2500 calories then dropped it down to 24 closer to the 12 week period but this time I'm just going to do it at 2400 um, for 10 to 12 weeks and if I can get down to 9.5 percent body fat while starting at 12 if I'm sitting at about 10.5 right now mid 10s high 10s let's say I can definitely get down to 8 percent within 10 to 12 weeks right and that's my goal so and yeah, to be honest, 
this hasn't been difficult. I have had my challenges as I've just mentioned in this video, right? Like nothing was just, you know, given to me on a silver platter. I had to work for it, right? And at the end of the day, I, I persevered, I didn't give up regardless what the challenges were. I was forced to give up a week earlier because of, because I was like, I had a, like an operation, yeah? And I was forced to give up. So that's, I'm, I'm proud of how far I've come. It's sort of like, nothing can really stop me. And I made my promise, you know, on social media that I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna do it. And I stick to what I, if I'm gonna put myself in the camera and say, I'm doing this challenge, I do it with full conviction. I don't do it half-assed, right? I do it properly. And I keep my word because I can't live with, my soul can't live with lying to people. Like that's not what I do. I like to be authentic and genuine as possible to myself and also to my viewer. And um, yeah, in all honesty, keeping lean abroad, if you have your, your blueprint, your macros, you have, you know exactly what your body needs. You've got full control over your body in terms of cutting, maintaining, lean bulking, putting on size, whatever it might be that your goal is. If you've got that, if you've got those, uh, if you've got that blueprint, right? It's not hard. All it is, is basically, all right, the next step is, all right, you've got your whey protein, which is like, oh, I can't go without it, right? Like, and all the, the, the people that train, all the guys that are, you know, into fitness, they know how crucial, like having whey protein at your disposal, like a quick disposable, a quick access protein, right? To get your your, your protein numbers up, right? That's, that's basically, the do or die, right? So that's like a main ingredient that you need. And yeah, I was just like, I went into this with a strong belief thinking, I'm just going to enjoy this. Like I'm not going to sit there and just complain about it, you know? And I was put to the test before when I was in Australia, I was like, oh, there should be everything accessible, right? Yeah, there was at the start, but then I was started to slowly, slowly get put out of my comfort zone and I was faced with trials and tribulations, but look, at the end of the day, I persevered. I didn't complain, I didn't whinge, right? And more or less, I took it on the chin and kept going, right? And I'm so grateful because I'm here today recording this and I wanted to share with this with you, yeah, because if there's anything that you can learn, it's like, you're always gonna have trials and tribulations come your way, right? It's all about pushing through and know that the dark times are only temporary and that there are good times, better times ahead, right? And you always will get tested by the universe, right? It doesn't matter who you are, you'll always be tested with something difficult. It's whether you give up or it's whether you keep pushing through. That's what I've learned. That's completely what I've learned from this. And going back to what I was saying, if you're someone that knows your your blueprint for your body, you know your, your macros, what to, what to eat exactly for what goal you're trying to achieve, then coming to any country, as long as you've got your staple whey protein, is not difficult, right? Like you can do what you need to do. You can maintain, you can, um, you know, cut weight, you can go on like a lean bulk. It's, it's, you can basically, so I know I'm confident that I can be put in nearly any country in the world. As long as I've got my whey protein, I can, I'm fine. Like, and as long as I've got access to at least something like some sort of gym and if I didn't let's say I was put into some put into a situation where there's absolutely no gym well then I'll just do body weight exercises I'll, I'll, I'll do burpees I'll do like ones that actually tax your body right like I'll do what's required man I'm not going to sit there complaining I'm just going to keep pushing through and staying lean, lean abroad if you're already lean someone that's lean and you're thinking of going on a holiday um you know, one month, two months, three months, you know, even six. Yeah, it definitely can be done. It's it's about your attitude and you going into it knowing exactly how much you should be eating. And there's no problem, man. As I said, you've got no issue, right? It would be a challenge if I was someone that was overweight and I decided to come to Thailand and do a challenge. Then it would be, I guess, challenging, right? Because you haven't built the hard hard work foundation beforehand and you're expecting to see results you know in a short period of time it's not going to be as easy right because when you're put out of your comfort zone and you haven't built those self-discipline skills those good habits and you're put to the test nine times out of ten most people are going to quit right and 
I'm grateful for the physique, the effort, the hard work, the tough times that I put, right? Like I wasn't, I didn't have this physique handed to me. I didn't just have, I didn't wake up one morning and just was shredded, right? Like lean, aesthetically pleasing. Like that's the look I like, being aesthetic, not someone that's massive, right? I want to be aesthetic, be lean, you know, have the striations going on, the veins and look good naked, right? Like look good, feel good. So every time I look at myself in the mirror, I'm proud, right? I don't care about eating that that quick junk meal. I don't, I don't care about that. That doesn't bring me happiness. That actually brings me guilt. So I'd rather focus on looking at myself in the mirror and go, wow, I, I made this, right? This is all like properly like handcrafted, right? And I'm getting very close to that original vision I had in my head when I was younger about what I wanted to ideally look like. I end, I'm very close to that vision, right? And I'm so happy because it, like I'm not being arrogant or anything but when you're aesthetically pleasing man like you're actually lean and you've got like lean hard muscle you look so rare man I'm, I'm being honest I'm not saying this from a like an arrogant point of view right I'm just saying wherever I go in public I look when you look shredded because it's always looking like you're some massive guy that like can't move you got a massive neck and like you got like massive arms and you look all juiced out like a, girls don't like that look and B, it's just, you're just eating a shit ton of food which your body's not normally naturally meant to, you know, handle and that's why all the big massive bodybuilders, they end up dying at early ages, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. So I thought, you know what, I want to be aesthetically pleasing, I want to look lean, want to look ripped, um, don't want to look bloated out, you know, and most importantly, look good naked, look good in a nice, you know, slim fit, tight t-shirt and yeah, just like feel confident in my own skin and I'm proud of what I've made because early in my 20s I was insecure with my physique I was um, someone that didn't like how I looked in the mirror and I knew no one was going to do it for me so I thought one day you know what instead of being arrogant stubborn thinking I know I'm going to trust what's just on the internet because look I'll tell you one thing what one person suggests for you to eat online like saying try this meal plan at like this amount of calories you're not gonna get the results you want. You're gonna to have to trial and error, error that for so long, make adjustments, check your weight, make adjustments. It's not something you can just walk in the park and do, right? This is a skill, being able to transform your body, make it into like a, a Greek goddess, yeah? Like, like a statue, like, you know what I'm saying? You'd like to look like a statue, it's a skill, man. It's a, you're an artist, you're like carving your way, like chiseling your way and making it, making your body look more handcrafted you know what i'm saying that's what i like that's the physique i like and no one can take that hard work away from you bro so as long as you maintain it and you know what you're doing it's that's the way to go um so yeah look i'm so proud of how this journey went um i'm back on my cut again tomorrow and yeah i'm looking forward to getting down to eight percent might even go down to seven percent we'll see how it goes but when you get back down to eight percent and um, yeah, that's my plans. And for those of you thinking, you know, what are you gonna do after you get down to 8%? Look, after I get down to 8% body fat, I'm going to, uh, if I'm happy with the way I look, I'm just gonna lock it in, okay? By locking it in, I'm just gonna start eating at like maintenance and uh, yeah, just maintain what I've, what I've built. And you obviously will put on like, you know, one, maybe 1% 1 body fat, like after that, right? but you're still gonna look better than how you look now. So each time you cut, diet break, cut, diet break, cut, diet break, the more you keep doing that, you're gonna end up with a more leaner, like you're gonna look better and better each time, right? Like it's not like something where it's like, you've already looked, you're already at nine, won't you look like that again? No, you'll keep like carving and carving and carving at the physique, man. You start like, you start looking better and better and better. So look, I'm proud of how this all went. I had to cut it short one week early, the challenge, but at the end of the day, still got down to a single digit body fat number. And yeah, back on it tomorrow. And I'm so, so grateful for all the challenges because I've learned from them. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd share my experience with you and, and how this journey went. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to my videos, just um, yeah, subscribe to it if you resonate with what I'm saying, if, if you like my videos, my content, um, 
give the video a like, share it to someone who, who you think uh, who could benefit from my video. But other than that, look, I'll see you in the next video and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Yeah? Peace.